Now we t uh, pay, uh, now we t turn our attention to 7-2 and we talk about matter as it is related to chemistry or chemical c compounds, chemical substances. So first of all, matter is uh, defined. Matter is any substance that occupies what space? and has mass so two things are space and mass and also talks about w i g h t weight and also tells that all matter has two things physical and chemical properties and so has that physical and then chemical properties and that's something that we will discuss in detail as well and then has some form uh, a form that is either it's some form either it's in state or exists in solid liquid or in gas state so matter has three states there are solid liquid or gas and those uh, and matter exists in that could be a solid, liquid, or gas. Since matter is made from chemicals, everything made out of matter is uh, chemical. Although matter has physical properties that we can touch, taste, smell, or see, not everything that we can see is matter. So there's something different. There's something uh, that, because it talks about light and energy, uh, that uh, while we can see it, we can see light, uh, or it is not matter. Why? Because it doesn't really occupy space or has mass. And so, for example, light does not have space or mass. And so it gives that example. It says, for instance, we can see visible light in electric sparks. But these are forms of energy. And energy is not uh, matter. And so uh, now here's an important definition. Everything known to exist in the universe is either made up of matter or energy. There are no exceptions to this rule. So energy does not occupy space or have physical properties such as mass or weight so energy is more discussed more in chapter 8 uh, where we talk about the basics of electricity so because energy does not occupy space or have physical properties such as mass or weight we cannot define it as matter as we talk about elements, the def primary definition or primary identity of elements is that these define the variety of atoms that we have in the universe. And basically going back to the concept of atoms, and we will take a look at carbon atom, that it does have a nucleus, uh, and then we have electrons that are orbiting uh, the nucleus uh, and they have their variety of different orbitals it could be uh, depending on the number of our uh, elements uh, electrons that are there we will have a variety of uh, orbitals uh, uh, that's on the atoms and so elements defines the types of atoms we have like they could be oxygen uh, right here it says oxygen, carbon, hydrogen atoms, and nitrogen atoms as well. Now those are what we call elements, it's the choices or uh, the variety. And uh, element is the simplest form of chemical matter. And uh, basically atom is a unit of matter and uh, element is the simplest form of chemical matter and element cannot be broken into simpler substances without the loss of identity so you cannot uh, you know if let's say a u is gold and gold cannot be converted to iron uh, 
without it losing its identity. That's, that's basically what it means is that there is an identity of atom or the type of atom uh, that the element defines. And then all matter is the uh, in the universe is made up of one or more of these 90 different elements. So there are about 90 different elements. And again, we go over here and we look at uh, uh, some examples of that. Let's also take a look at And now here we see in figure 7.2, we see the periodic table of elements. And so each of these uh, are elements and uh, they define the type of atoms there may be. This is a hydrogen, here's a helium, and, uh, and then magnesium, sodium, and there are different letters that define each of these elements and then each of these elements have their various types of atoms in it so we do have a carbon and something you'll notice that there's a an atomic number you will see that it's six uh, for carbon so i'll write that as a reminder that's something we will see because we will see uh, six electrons uh roaming around uh, carbon and uh, and so those I numbers identify certain aspects of that uh, we do have uh, silver here gold here copper here and that's uh, it's, it's helpful to to take a look at it in um, in a chart laid out because it identifies certain chemical properties uh, of of these uh, uh, elements. And so we draw on the concept of atoms uh, coming from elements. And then we'll take a look at how, what an atom looks like. Atoms are the particles from which all matter is composed. And so the atom is the smallest particle of an element that still retains the properties of that element. And there are about 90 different types of elements. Again, it's, it tells us that. And so as a result, there are 90 different types of atoms. And, um, and then it describes what an atom is. Atom consists of smaller particles, and the smaller particles are protons, uh, which have a uh, positive uh, and then electrical, a positive electrical charge, and neutrons with a neutral charge, and electrons uh, with a negative charge. And so we will take a look at the next image. And what we see in here is the carbon atoms. And uh, so we see that uh, how many electrons do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. And that was defined by the uh, atomic number th that was given and so what we see in here is we have the neutrons which have a no charge on those and, and then protons have positive charges on that and then we have uh, electrons that have negative charges around it so it balances it electrically as well so each atom is balanced and it and it does seek that balance and as a result will exchange certain and uh, will share the electrons uh, to do a reaction as that's how molecules are made and uh, and so we talk about molecules what molecules are if you have uh, a number of atoms and uh, they will connect to each other 
maybe in some form. <clears throat> and so we get uh, from that, uh, we get molecules. Molecules is formed by joining two or more atoms uh, chemically. For example, water is made from hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms. Something we saw earlier that um, uh, here's an oxygen and you have a hydrogen attached to it and another hydrogen attached to it and you get a, uh, a chemical uh, formula H2O and these are the two hydrogens and then the oxygen as a result of it. Uh, carbon dioxide is made from carbon atoms and oxygen atoms and there are two uh, types of molecules but first of all let's take a look at the carbon dioxide we have a carbon and then in this case we have an oxygen oxygen and that's where we get the co2 but the, the bonds are uh, double bonds connected to each of those so there's different variety of chemical properties uh, of these uh, molecules as well and in this course we wouldn't have we are not looking at those uh, we're not going to go into bonds it's just good idea to have an overview of that molecules uh, we have two or more uh, atoms bonded together that's the definition of molecules but there are two types of molecules there's the elemental molecule and a compound molecule and we will see what those uh, types of molecules uh, are how these um, how the elemental molecules and compound molecules are defined first of all the elemental molecules means that it contains two or more atoms first of all that's the molecule of the same element and it gives you an example here so this is a oxygen uh, o meaning oxygen uh, molecule and if you have two of those uh, that becomes the o2 so if you have oxygen and an oxygen connected you get o2 and the O2 is what we normally have in our air uh, on Earth, which we breathe. Then we have what we call an ozone layer. And ozone layer has a three oxygens. So, and they are uh, connected to one another. And when you have that connection to one another, these, uh, this ozone layer is formed. And this ozone layer is what uh, protects us from the sun's rays in our, uh, the canopy that's, here's the earth. And then you have the, what we call the sky. Uh, but the, what gives us that blue tint of, in the sky is because the ozone layer, the O3 that is in the, um, in the atmosphere. Uh, I like, again, it, uh, absorbs the sun's high energy rays and then therefore it is able to connect uses that energy to to connect to one another then this is this ozone layer protects us from the ultraviolet radiation and uh and what we get is o3 in there now because this is made from the same element and in this case we're talking about oxygen uh we're talking about oxygen element then it's called an elemental uh, molecule in contrast to the elemental molecule we have what we call a compound molecule also known as compounds and uh, in this case, we have a variety of uh, elements. So in the sodium chloride, we have sodium, uh, the sodium um, element in here, and then chloride atoms. So what we get is sodium 
uh, chloride. In case of water, something we've been looking, H2O, we have two hydrogens and we have then an oxygen here. In a carbon dioxide, we have carbon and then two oxygens connected uh, to that. So again, we have different elements in this case. So it's called a compound molecule. And then hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. We have oxygens bonded here. And then each of these is bonded to an hydrogen. And as a result, it becomes a what we call a uh, compound molecule. <coughs> Now we shift our, uh, that's, those are the, uh, after looking at the, how uh, the atoms and elements and molecules define the concept of matter, we want to take a look at the states of the matter. We've been talking about, uh, um, we've been talking about uh, the physical uh, forms of, of that and uh, so states of matter, there are, again, three of them. So all matter exists in one of the three different physical forms. <clears throat> we have a solid, a liquid, and gas. The difference in these uh, uh, physical forms depends on the temperature. And we'll see an example of that, primarily the water. Uh, can function as an ice, can exist, I mean, as a solid, can exist as a liquid, and can exist as a gas. And uh, so let's, uh, let's take a look at that example. And so we see that uh, the, the states of matter is, is uh, as we saw earlier, that there's a solid here. And this could definitely be a water example of water because when it uh, uh, becomes ice, it becomes crystallized. And so you see that's well organized uh, wa water molecules. <coughs> and then in a liquid uh, form, they are more scattered, more uh, at a distance. And so uh, liquid, uh, it takes the shape of a the container and uh, then the if you heat that up then we what we get is uh, the gas stage so three three states of matter are solid liquid and gas <coughs> Okay, and then uh, this uh, huge uh, text here just says, again, three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. But as the, as the water or any other substance that moves through these three for forms, uh, from solid to liquid and liquid to gas, or gas to liquid or and then liquid to solid, <clears throat> That type of shift uh, is called a uh, physical physical change. And so um, let's take a look at that in more detail. Uh, the uh, states of matter, again, uh, we keep emphasizing that, but here's solid, liquid, and gas and then solid is rigid fixed shape and volume and it's like ice uh brush uh well our toothbrushes or whatever solid uh, type of brushes or ch uh, chair uh, definitely takes on a rigid fixed shape and then uh, volume liquid uh, has a definite volume but takes the shape of the container so and then gas has no fixed volume. It could, um, or shape, it takes a shape and the volume of the container. 
And so example is steams, vapor, propane, ozone uh, layer as well. <clears throat> Next, we see physical and chemical properties of matter. So every substance has unique physical or chemical properties that allow us to identify it. So physical properties are characteristics that can be determined without a chemical reaction. And so we don't have to have a chemical reaction taking place in order to look at its physical properties. For example, color. We just look at it and it's not our eyes are conducting some kind of chemical reaction with this uh, product or a compound that we're looking at. Odor. When we're smelling it, there's no chemical reaction that we're trying to engage in with that compound. When we look at the weight of it or the density of it, uh, that's the thickness, sort of like um, there's a density of water would be uh, low compared to honey. Honey is much thicker and denser or specific gravity and uh, specific gravity of uh, melting points. That's again, looking at uh, how... Uh, when does it melt? At what point does it start to melt? And uh, like sugar, sugar melts at a particular heated. Um, and then we have a boiling point and then hardness. All these aspects that we uh, measure, we are not going to be conducting some kind of a chemical reaction. Those are just physical properties that we can measure. But there are certain chemical properties uh, that are part of the characteristics of that compound. And those are what we uh, can only assess, can determine through a chemical reaction. So those are determined by chemical reaction. So again, the physical and chemical properties of matter, physical properties do not require us to have a chemical reaction. Uh, that we can just sense it or feel it or uh, observe it or measure it some manner using an instrument, but we're not doing a chemical reaction. Then when we want to know the chemical properties of that substance, then we can run that through a chemical uh, reaction and, and measure the types of uh, chemical properties that may have. And again, uh, rusting iron and burning wood are examples of change in uh, chemical properties. In both of these examples, the chemical reaction known as oxidation and the addition of oxygen or loss of hydrogen creates a chemical change in the identity of a substance. And so when we're talking about uh, uh, we something we talked about on uh, a uh, bicycle, and if uh, here's a my drawing of a bicycle uh, standing in a rain, and we know that a rain is at water, uh, but there's oxygen in that, and oxygen will come and take this uh, metal and cause rusting of that, and so rusting is a um, uh, oxidation process, in other words oxygen is reacting. And then the burning of the wood, you have uh, definitely you have carbon in the wood. And so when you get oxygen coming in, uh, then that begins to react with it, becomes carbon dioxide comes out of that. <clears throat> or carbon monoxide can come out of that as well. And... Uh, when those those chemical reactions happen, carbon monoxide, then um, but it there's combustion that takes place. 
that allows that chemical reaction to happen with oxygen. Those are oxidation type of reactions. Uh, and then um, our loss of hydrogen creates a chemical change in the identity of the substance. So um, when we do measure some kind of um, the chemical properties of the substance, we are uh, what we're introducing is a chemical reaction. And then the result is there's definitely a chemical a change in that. We talk about physical and chemical changes. To some extent, we've already uh, talked about it. Uh, so, But let's explore that further. Matter can be changed into in two different ways. What are the two different ways? Physically and chemically. <clears throat> the uh, physical change is a change in the form. So, it, uh, or physical properties of a substance without the formation of new substance. You, you're not getting it. You're not going to get something new out of it. It's just going to change its form. And what we see example of this is there's ice, which is, and the state of the ice is uh, solid. So solid and solid becomes liquid. Oops. Uh, Q-U-I-D, liquid. And then if we heat it, uh, it becomes steam. And so it becomes gas form of gas so what we're seeing is the water this is again water that's frozen water that is liquid water that is steam and its physical change is in the form that it takes on uh, but the water will always remain water in that in these conditions and this is called physical change In contrast to that, we have what we call the chemical change. And chemical change is the chemical where the chemical composition of a substance in which a new substance or substances are formed and they have different properties all together. So uh, what we're seeing here is you have acid and you have uh, base or you have uh, alkali and you have acid and when you mix this together there's a heat production it's an exothermic reaction and what we see is that uh, there's a certain amount of neutralization happens and this is uh, uh, getting closer to forming a water type of uh, environment that is uh, neutralized uh, liquid and uh but all together, because of the reaction, you have a very different uh, chemistry here, or di a very different chemical here, chemical, de and so that's called chemical change. And so chemical change again, we uh, iron into uh, iron can turn into rust, and we talked about the oxidation of that, or wood into ash, and that's an oxidation process as well but the, that's a combustion uh, through uh, f uh, the fire and those are oxidation is the, the example of chemical reactions that cause a chemical change <clears throat>